In our next exercise, we'll create a motion chart, which allows you to visualize in action how your data changes over time. Let's create a new sheet and get started on building our motion chart. Let's just call this motion chart. And we'll make sure we're using our consumer complaints file for this example. Let's add number of complaints onto our chart by double clicking. Now let's visualize the distribution using a date dimension. So let's pull date received on over to our columns shelf. And we'll change this to be a monthly view instead of a yearly view. And we'll use the continuous month, which contains both the month and year. So you can quickly see that there has definitely been an uptick in complaints in recent years. But now let's take a look at the actual volume of complaints on by issue type. So if we drag issue onto color, add all members, there's quite a number of issues. So it's very difficult to visualize this when there's so much noise altogether right here. So let's go ahead and just filter on a couple of issues. In order to get issue into our filters, you can either click issue from the dimensions pane and drag it onto filters, or we can just right click on issue and do show filter. Let's filter out everything but loan related issues. So I'll add in these two loans loan servicing and load modification. In order to make this chart a motion chart so we can visually see how this changes in real time, we have to add our date dimension into the pages shelf. So we can add date received into pages and then we'll change the page to match what we're currently showing on our columns shelf continuous month with year. And instead of these little circles down here to show our marks, let's change that to be a square. Now let's hide our issue filter by clicking on a little carrot here and just hiding the card. The filters are still applied, but it frees up the side of the screen. Now we can better see our pages shelf. Let's watch what happens when I press play. We see how these squares move all on their own on a month by month basis to show us what really happened in that particular month and watching how it moves up and down. But we also want to be able to see historically what's happening. So in order to do that, we have to click on this little tick box to show our history. Click on show history and we want to show all of the marks regardless of whether or not they're in the past. So we'll go ahead and click on all. And then we can adjust the way the marks are being displayed. So instead of showing the actual mark, we can show a trail or we can show both. I like the trail. And our trail format. And you could also change the way the trail is being displayed. So let's change that to be a simple dotted line. And we'll click off. And we'll reset our pages shelf all the way back to the top, January 2012. And we'll hit play. So now you can see the motion chart is working properly. We have our trail and it's plotting out on a month to month basis exactly what went on with that data. So it's a nice way of almost like watching a movie, watching the story play out of how things are changing over time versus seeing the entire result at once. It's a little more impactful. And this is all made possible by the pages shelf, which allows us to set the level of detail that we want to allow the chart to advance by.
and the chart will continue to continuously loop until you hit stop. And that's how you create a motion chart in Tableau. And again, these are not limited to just showing lines. You can also add in text. So for example, we can make our word cloud if we pop back over to here to also be a motion chart by simply adding in the time dimension, date received, and then changing the page level of detail. So showing it at a monthly level, just like we did here. This concludes the exercise on creating motion charts. Let's move on to the next unit.